If you need the instance um, interpretation, there will be receiver outside at the reception, so you can get one, and you yeah, it can help you to understand a bit easier if needed. So. To begin with, um, there is a short introduction. So sustainable development is getting more and more public attention nowadays. And thank you for the great awareness towards the planet we lived. Um, but most of us, sustainability is still a concept to us. But today, we are very lucky. We get two pioneers to share their brilliant experience to us. But before we go into their presentation, um, the Social Enterprise Summit has prepared two very special gifts for our guests today. So it's produced by one of the Social Enterprise in Hong Kong people on board. It's a board game, so may I invite Andy and also Edwin on stage and so we can have a group photo together with the gift. Thank you, Eric. first section um, will be the first session of this uh, symposium will be presented by Miss Annie Maria Sanonis. Um, she's the head of finance, finance division, the Bank of Auckland and fin from Finland. And may, uh, may, shall we give a round of applause to you? Annie? Thank you. Yeah, uh, my first time in Hong Kong. Uh, and really wonderful city. I had the opportunity to come here on Saturday. I have a couple of days to experience Hong Kong. So it's quite far away I'm coming from Scandinavia, uh, Nordic countries, from Finland, uh, represented uh, Bank of Åland. Uh, I'm staying in Helsinki in Finland. And uh, Bank of Holland is a Finnish bank, quite small Finnish bank established over hundreds, uh, almost 100 years ago. And uh, we have a relationship bank focus in, in private banking customers and uh, our target seg segment is high net worth and individuals and they companies. We have uh, 100,000 customers and, and uh, 700 employees and our operations are in Finland, Sweden, and in the Åland Islands. And our head office headquarters is in the Åland Islands in the middle of the Baltic Sea. Uh, our sustainability strategy consists, consists of four parts. We have responsible investments, uh, responsible lending, social responsibility, and environmental responsibility. And the Baltic Sea project is an important part of our environmental responsibility. Our vision is that we should all fit on one planet. And our bank, we are, we are uh, working to ensure that the resources on our planet would be enough also for the next future generations. We have long history with our environmental work. Uh, almost 20 years ago, we launched an environmental account. And yearly, uh, bank donates equivalent 0.2% of the deposits. Uh, since its inception, uh, over nearly uh, 2 million euros, almost 18 million Hong Kong dollars, have, has been paid to different kind of environmental activities. Baltic Sea is, is uh, one of the worst, worst, worst most, uh, we wanted to do more, uh, sorry, is this, yes, this way. <laughs> so we wanted to do more with our customers. We, we finance uh, good, good projects. The Baltic Sea is one of the most world's most polluted seas. It's uh, approximately 90 million people living around its coastline. And the situation is quite critical. Uh, I love the Baltic Sea. Uh, I'm a sailor. I am a captain of my own sailing boat. And it was summer 2014. Uh, I sailed from the, with my friends from the Åland Islands to the Finnish archipelago. And the situation was really bad. I decided we have to do something. 
so we de developed the Baltic Sea uh, project with mission to create healthier Baltic Sea. And we do it by funding good ideas and raising public awareness. Yearly, the account is open for companies, organizations, and individuals to apply for funding for the aid, good ideas to save the Baltic Sea. We wanted to do more with our customers, so we do finance good ideas, but in the end, to save the Baltic Sea, it depends on climate change. And consumer behavior has huge impact to climate change. If you think Finland, uh, the almost 70% of Finland carbon footprint consists of, consists, uh, of consumer behavior. So it's huge impact. So we, 2016, we, we uh, launched a Baltic Sea credit card. Instead of hierarchy, this card promotes cause, care, and Baltic Sea engagements. And it's replacing all the credit cards in our bank. The full front page of the card is devoted to the environment. And also MasterCard accepted to put a logo on the other side of the card. So this is the first card in the world where the MasterCard logo is on the other side of the card. It's also environmental friendly. It's used, used uh, it's made this recyclable material. It's used by mace. So it's very in environmental friendly card. If you think our consumption nowadays, so, so we are eating away our planet. Uh, and in Northern Europe, we find a combination of this dying sea and the highest usage of credit cards and digital trans transactions. I believe that we people, we want to do good things, but we are also quite lazy ones, so, so it should be easy for us. And uh, there are a lot of different kind of carbon footprint calculations available in the internet, but you should be very interested in about the issue to search for them. With the credit card uh, connected to the index, which calculates the carbon footprint, you can't avoid seeing your carbon footprint. So we wanted to awake everyone to think the environmental impact. So the Olan Index, which we are calling the index, uh, calculates the environmental impact of each credit card transaction. We haven't created any new data. We have used the best uh, available data. Sustainalytics uh, and Thomson Reuters has analyzed over 4,000 uh, companies' uh, carbon footprint. KPMG has helped us to put these companies to the MasterCard's merchant category codes. And that's why we get the carbon footprint per industry. And we have combined that to the World Bank's data so that our customers can see their carbon footprint per purchases in euros or dollars and, and in crumbs. Our own IT company has connected this index uh, to the credit card. And we also offer our customers opportunity to donate different kind of nature conservations. And there is where we work together with WWF. This is how it's presented to our customers in the mobile bank. Uh, so customers can easily compare and track their behavior over time and easily donate to the nature conservation. So it helps our customers uh, to make more sustainable choices. Have you ever thought about the true cost of your last purchase? The price you actually paid is only the tip of an iceberg. The real impact of our spending behavior has yet to be calculated until now. As a bank, we analyze financial data to identify risks. We are based on an island in one of the world's most polluted sea, and the problem is alarming. That's why we launched the Baltic Sea Project and the Olan Index to provide funding and understanding and engage all clients as agents for change.
by combining financial risk analysis data, merchant category codes, and carbon pricing set by the World Bank, the index calculates the environmental impact of every transaction. The bank presents a monthly impact report of your credit card purchases and the opportunity to compensate for the true cost of your consumption. The initiative was launched to position the bank using PR, digital, direct and social media channels to activate and engage both clients, a public and the competition. But the most effective medium is the credit card, BioSource, that serves as a daily reminder of the need for change. With this initiative, the bank has turned all client tools for consumption into an instrument for nature. Within the last year, the bank has been invited multiple times to the United Nations conferences on climate change, generated 380,000 euros in funding, reached 350 million people, and increased brand awareness by 308%. In the first quarter, we've computed over 2.5 million transactions. But true change is created together and the index is offered as an open innovation to all other banks and their clients. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So it's all about collaboration. And if you think the social media has changed everything, uh, companies are not, uh, they are communicating to the people and, and the communication needs to be honest, authentic, and, and uh, really, uh, we need to feel and understand the, the communications. Uh, people want to be part of something bigger than themselves. They want to be part and connect with companies which have real purpose. And it's important that every company uh, considers what's the impact of the business to the employees, to the customers, to the society, and to the whole planet. What's the company's purpose? If I think our company, so our customers, uh, they, they are very proud. They share pictures of their credit card in social media. They share our postings in social media. Our employees are really proud. They feel that they have great impact in their work. So we have in change our, our customers, uh, engage our customers and, and uh, employees as agents for change. Uh, but the big thing is a very bold decision from Bank of Orland that we have opened the index to any bank uh, who want to be part of the solution. So we want to change the consumer behavior and prevent the climate change. And we have only 100,000 customers and we can't do that alone. And uh, it's really great that United Nations is now promoting the idea and we are getting contacts from many banks around the world. We have now, by now we had discussions, uh, banks in 12 countries about implementing the Orland idea uh, index. And the index is fully scalable. We have chosen our focus in, in saving the Baltic Sea but the focus can be any other uh, environmental issue. So the change is made together. Uh, I invite you all in this room to offer the all an index to your banks in your countries. So please, uh, they can take uh, contact to me and our bank. So we share the index to any bank who wants to be part of the solution. Thank you. We'll have question and answer sections after the panel discussion. So um, thank you, Andy. Thank you for your very innovative ideas. And sadly, I cannot see my organization in your list. You're one of the, uh, you got the build up here, but you should get JGI as well. <laughs> so, um, and then we, uh, um, we have, we get, um, we'll have Edwin from the Hong Kong Research Institute of Tesla and Approach from, to share us uh, um, his ideas on the Tesla research. Thank you, Edwin. Good morning. So first question, how many of you have ever heard of the Research Institute for Textile and Apparel? 
oh, okay, more than I thought. Because usually that's the problem. I have to ex introduce us because nobody knows who we are and, and nobody knows what we do. And, and, and it's our fault because we're not very good at talking about who we are. Uh, and and uh, I want to talk about what we do and in the context of circularity and sustainability in the, in the textile and apparel industry. Um, and so we are the Research Institute for Textile and Apparel. We are funded under something called the Innovation and Technology Fund uh, of, of Hong Kong. And so we are, um, we are a applied research center. So we engage in practical, useful uh, research uh, that is not theoretical, but uh, we w and, and our aim is to roll these things out to the market as quickly as possible so that we can produce useful services and products uh, for, for our community and for our industry. Uh, and so we've been at this for, for a while now, for, um, though in global standards for, for applied research centers, we're still very young. And because of that, we have, we have uh, been focused mostly on research and not very good at communicating about what we're researching. So I'm, I'm very grateful for the opportunity today to talk about some of the stuff that we're, we're doing. Um, so our area of interest is in things like materials. So how can we have uh, newer, uh, greener, more useful, more high performance materials, the way we manufacture, uh, evaluating uh, and, and looking at what we're doing, and then systems, infrastructure, and supply chain types of solution for, the in, uh, for our industry. Now, we have currently three major research themes. Uh, so we work on things like Industry 4.0, which is the automation and the intelligence of, of research we work on things that impact uh, community and society. Uh, and, and so I was looking at the list of people who are in the room, allegedly in the room, uh, and I noticed that there are some groups that we work with. The Tonghua Group of Hospital is one of our, our closest uh, nonprofit partners. We do a lot of the, uh, um, the, the, the apparel and the uniforms uh, for, for their clients as well as for their, their workers. Uh, and, we, um, and we do work with uh, other um, um, uh, groups in society. Uh, for instance, we have recently developed the uniforms for the, for the marine police uh, for their e extreme hazardous uh, condition uh, or, or their uh, the extreme climate condition, high performance uh, um, uniforms. We have redesigned the uniforms for all the fire services. Uh, we are preparing Hong Kong af athletes for the 2020 Olympic uh, Games uh, coming up in Tokyo. Uh, uh, the, our, our developed footwear and apparel won a couple of uh, silver and, and, and bronze medals in the, just in the Asian Games right now. And we also work on sustainability. Now, uh, these project themes were not something we created because we're, we, we were uh, um, very creative or, or we just happened upon them. This was uh, as a result of a, a fairly extensive uh, a stakeholder engagement exercise that we did several years ago, and we went around and asked uh, uh, our industry partners and, and other people who were interested in, in, in textile and apparel uh, and their use in, in society, what things that they're most interested in and what things are on top of the mind. And so this is where these themes came from, and sustainability by far was uh, the theme that everybody was talking about and everybody was thinking about and uh, everything and this is the, the the theme and the challenge that we hear most from the client side as well from the user side as well so in sustainability these are some of the things that we're doing uh, right now so for instance we are working on waterless technologies how can we take all the the water uh, all the wet processes in in apparel and and and, and textile manufacturing either clean, them, clean up the water that we use or not use water at all. So, so waterless technologies are, are uh, one of the, the domains that we research in. We want to improve on the efficiency and the use of resources in, in manufacturing. Um, we have uh, and develop a lot of green materials so that we, uh, we reduce our carbon footprint, reduce uh, the use of uh, harmful uh, chemicals in the, in the manufacturing and the use process, and then recycling and circularity. How, how can we reuse or more efficiently use our, uh, the, the, the products that, that we, we use, uh, the products that are in the supply chain and products that are in society right now? Um, and um, I want to share a little bit about some of the projects that we, we did around these domains uh, today. Um, I want to start here. This was a, this was a, a painting that I saw 
uh, on, an, on, on an airplane ride uh, a couple a while back, a couple of years ago, and it was a. This is a painting that exists in the in the uh, Museum of Fine Art in Boston, uh, and it is a painting of um, courtesans uh, making silk uh, clothing for the emperor. This is about a thousand years old. I looked at this painting for a long time because I was bored. I was sitting on an airplane with nothing else to do. And I kept asking myself, this reminds me of something, this reminds me of something, and this reminds me of something. And what had finally dawned upon me was that this looks exactly like a manufacturing production line in a garment factory today. So immediately, I got very depressed. Our industry for a thousand years have not substantially changed or radically uh, improved the way we do things. So certainly, uh, that's sort of the first thought. And the second thought is, wonderful, now we have lots of opportunities to, imp uh, to improve on our industry because we have a thousand years to catch up on. And so, so one of the problems of, of this view of what we do is that it is a linear view. We, we consume and we throw away things and we make things without uh, any intention or thought about what to do with it after we, we finish using them. And so one of the big challenges in sustainability is how do we turn our currently linear view of, of our industry into a much more circular view of industry? How can we continue to use materials over and over again? The challenge in, the, in society and in how we live today is, is twofold. So first of all, we are probably the first generation in history of civilization that think of clothes as a disposable, consumable commodity. Up to this point in time, clothes are something that, that are durable. These are things that mothers hand, hand over to their daughters. These are dowry. These are things that we treasure. These are things that we repair and take care of. These are not consumables until now. So that's the first challenge. That the, the attitude towards what we use has changed radically. And the second challenge, as we, as we look at this, is that um, we, we consume a lot. We, we consume too much. And we are consuming more and more. Uh, fashion is fast. That's the reality of, 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 the, of the world that we live in right now. But, but materials are durable. So the challenge in circularity is that of course, we, we, want to, we want to look new and we want to look updated and we want to look fashionable. But can we do it in a more cost-effective manner and in a more responsible manner by, by getting, extracting the most value out of the materials that we use in, in making fashionable items? And that's one of the, the, the challenges that we have in circularity and one of the challenges that we want to deal with as a, as a, as a research center uh, on the products and the materials that we use. To get to that, we have to step over our boundary as a research center. Uh, there is no innovation and in technology government officials in the building, I hope, uh, or in the room, but I want to share a little secret with you. Um, as a small research center, we don't have a lot of adult supervision. So we go way beyond the scientific challenges, and we start looking at all these other challenges to get th people to use and to make things useful in the marketplace and in community. So we start with the science challenge, but then we have to talk about the engineering challenge as we scale up systems and equipment that we use. And then we have to talk about the logistics challenge. How do we get materials that we want to process to the place where we can process them? How can we get these things then efficiently to consumers? And then finally, what's the business case? How can we make this a, a viable, attractive, profitable business so that business, businesses will, be, will, will look at this not as a charity, not as a nonprofit, but as a viable business model? And in this way, we can scale up what we're trying to do in our research center. So the, these uh, are, are the focus and these are the, the things that we look at today because our intention is very much to, to move to scale as quickly as possible. So there's a lot of, of challenges. So the first thing that we deal with in, in modern um, recycling is the way clothes are made today. And more specifically is in the fibers that we use today. 
most of us, if you look at the care label or the content label of your apparel, will find that most of what you wear, most of what we wear, are made from blended materials. So cotton is blended with, with uh, polyester, which is blended with wool, which is blended with linens and silks and, and so on and so forth. And all that produces materials that are lightweight, comfortable, um, that, that, uh, that performs very well for us, which is the good news. But the bad news is that you can't separate them easily. Once materials are mixed together, once materials are blended together, they, they are, they, they are they're entwined or they're in, intri intricately put together. Uh, so, and they're not meant to be separated. We didn't think about the separation process in the design and manufacturing process. But unless you can separate mixed material, it is very hard to reuse them again because you can't process them. So the first challenge was how do we do this separation and how do we do it in a way that doesn't damage the material so that, so that we can use them again and again. And then there are other challenges which are easier, the color sortation and then, and then the, the functionality of it. But, but, but those are the, the, the first challenge that we have was in separation. And then in separating a material and recycling a material, there's basically three basic ways of doing this. You can do it mechanically, so you can do physical recycling, which, is, which we do. But uh, mechanical recycling damages materials. It is, it is a very uh, heavy-handed way of, of, of doing recycling. Then there are other methods which we explored, which are chemical and biological ways. And I want to get back to, to the, the biological a little, little bit in which uh, we use a development technology for that. The, the most hopeful um, recycling technology seem to be chemical. Though the problem with chemical recycling is that you create new problems as you solve old problems. Um, we, the, the way to do chemical recycling is to, is to use somewhat harsh chemistry to do the separation of material. And so you create wastewater and you, you know, create a new waste stream in the, in the process of doing the separation. Um, so last year, this time, well, September last year, we, we, an, we announced a breakthrough uh, after a little bit of work. Uh, by the way, this, this research is, uh, is uh, the, the, the key sponsor of this research is from another uh, Scandinavian country is from the H&M Foundation and they're working with us. We are the largest research partner in the world for the H&M Foundation uh, and, and uh, they, they came to us about uh, two and a half years ago uh, to help them work on, on recycling and circularity. So last September we announced a, uh, a breakthrough in our labs. Uh, we using a hydrothermal method for recycling and, and, and separation of material. Uh, so hydrothermal just means heat and pressure, so I, by, and, and, and without other chemistry. We basically spent a year taking more and more of the chemicals that, that used in chemical recycling, and then we, we came upon a, a, a breakthrough uh, that, we, that we said, ah, Eureka, we, we have something here. And so um, we very quickly said, this is great, and this is the first in the world, uh, innovated and, and, and uh, developed in Hong Kong. Uh, which is a, a, a significant breakthrough for, for what we want to do. Um, but then it's great that we can do these things in a small lab laboratory. The challenge is can we make large engineered uh, systems so that we can do this en masse. Just to give you an order of magnitude uh, in terms of the challenge for Hong Kong in terms of textile and apparel recycling, we as a society, as a small city of about seven, seven some million people, we throw away somewhere between 200 to 300 tons of apparel every day. It's a lot of stuff to throw away, right? So assuming, and nobody has really clear numbers for us, but let's assume that a half of this, 150 tons, can be used as, uh, as old clothes and can be used as is without any processing. And I'm being very generous here, but let's be optimistic. And let's say 100, 150 tons of this a day can be used as is, and so that goes back into use and back in society. What do we do with the stuff at the bottom? Things that are damaged, things that are soiled, things that are um, of unknown origin. Um, what do we do with all that? So today, what do we do with all that? They go into landfills. Uh, or they're incinerated. 
None of, the, none of those are, are good uh, solutions. So what we said is, hey, if we have a way that we can reprocess and separate this material, couldn't we make this into something more useful? Because then we have a, then we solve one of the logistics problems, right? We are, in a, we are a small city. We can actually move these things quite efficiently. Um, I'll, I'll get back to this. But, but so this is what we did. I, I, I came up before and I realized I, I have an old, older version of the presentation for you today. But we actually worked with uh, a group of engineers and we actually built this uh, system. This is a hydrothermal system and this, this can process about 100 kilos a day. Not, not, a, not enough, but about 100 kilos a day. And um, we, we uh, finished the work. Uh, remember last September we announced the scientific breakthrough. This September, September 3rd to be, to be exact, we actually finished, the, um, we finished, we built this system. And this is system today is in operation right now and is processing a lot of the things that, that have, uh, we have di diverted from landfills. Are we geniuses because we can do that so quickly? Because most of these types of uh, uh, applied research projects don't get to scale uh, less than five to 10 years. You know, how, how did we get to do this? Um, so I'll tell you the secret again, hopefully innovation and technology, uh, government officials are not in the building. So we cheated. Um, and how did we cheat? First of all, before we got funding, we started working. Uh, and so we, we, we just said, let's start the experiment and, and we will get permission to do the experiment later. So we actually were, were about 12 months into the project before we got funding. And then uh, uh, as soon as we got funded for the small project, we approached uh, H&M Foundation and the government and said, now we want to build an uh, industrial scale system. And then just as we did the last time, we did a lot of the work before it was approved and, and funded. And so actually, this is actually about four or five years of real work uh, that we did in two years. Um, and then we also, um, then we also acknowledge that we're not good at some of this stuff, that we don't have enough engineering talent to do this. And so what you see here is a group of uh, retired engineers that we found in southern Japan. Uh, and we said, we have this idea, we want to turn this into a, a, uh, a, a true engineering systems and we don't have a lot of time. Can you help us? And, uh, and they jumped on it. So it was quite exciting and, and I have to say it was a moving experience to work with uh, these uh, engineers as well as our, our Hong Kong engineering team. So we worked together. These, these engineers tell us, and I don't know how they work the numbers, but collectively they have a thousand years of engineering experience between them. So the youngest engineer that worked with us was 62 years old. The oldest engineer, the guy in the white, t the white shirt is 81 years old. And, and um, so it was lots of fun. We, we don't have a thousand years of engineering experience. And they, they have done this. They have done these types of systems before. And we said, okay, let's just build this. We, we will, it will be a Hong Kong Japanese effort and, and let's build this. And we actually did the preliminary engineering and the prototyping of this system in, uh, in, in, in Japan. And then we, we, uh, and then we finished the system and moved the system to Taipo uh, Industrial Estate uh, uh, earlier this year. So six months in, in Japan and six months in Hong Kong. Uh, it, was a, it was a little bit scary for when an 81-year-old engineer is climbing up and down handling uh, heavy uh, equipment, uh, but it was, it was lots of fun. Uh, the, the, um, then he came and thanked me because he said, you know, it's my choice in Japan is either to go play golf every day or to work on something really useful. So uh, this was really fun for me. So we were, we were kind of moved and we were very excited. Um, but this is non-traditional. This is not how you build systems and th this is not how you get things done. But, but um, we were impatient enough to said, say that, you know, let's think outside the box and pull in expertise where we can and, and admit and acknowledge that there are things that we're not as good as. Uh, uh, and so, um, the system is up and running. It's over spec. It is. Uh, they they over delivered, uh, and it was ahead of schedule. And we're very excited about this. This is version 1.0 of the system, by the way. 
Uh, it, but, uh, and we are building a, a new tank to, to do the same things and be a l even more efficient. Uh, and uh, we want to see if we can get that tank up and running by, by January, uh, well, by spring uh, next year. Um, uh, and and, and the, the, the hydrothermal system is this, uh, and I, I apologize for being a science geek in, in the room here, but this is very exciting to us, to, uh, to research scientists, is that we can separate material and we can, se and we can separate material back into yarn form. Now today, if you want to separate and reprocess something like polyester, a PET, right, uh, uh, you, you basically have to melt it back down uh, and then re-spin it. It's a, it's a fairly energy intensive and a fairly complicated and a fairly expensive process. And that's why recycled PET costs more than virgin PET, right? Because you have to do this fairly expen expensive process. The exciting thing that we did uh, uh, with the hydrothermal system is that we recover things like polyester in fiber form without damaging the fiber. So what goes in is what comes out. And, and then all we have to do is to twist the fiber together and we can, we can re-spin it. We actually, I wish I have the samples with me, we actually are starting to make clothes with them already just by twisting these, these fibers that we recover from the system together. So a very short, very cost-effective uh, recycling um, process that doesn't damage the material. Today, if you take a non-recyclable PET bottle and you turn it into a non-recyclable PET t-shirt, it is still, unfortunately, a linear solution because that's the end of the road for the, for the non-recyclable PET t-shirt because the process of making that bottle into a t-shirt is so uh, aggressive that it damages the fiber so much that you can't do it a second time. The, the advantage of what we're working with a hydrothermal system that is developed in Hong Kong is that we are able to do this infinite number of times because what goes in is what comes out. The, the, the material is not damaged in process. So we're very excited about this and we are, we are looking at very quickly scaling it up uh, uh, in, in 2019, uh, ironing out the system and making sure it's more, uh, it, it operates um, even more effectively. This time last year, the, the cycle to, to, uh, to, to process this material is about two hours per cycle. Today, the process to do this uh, cycle is about 35 minutes. So, so a lot of efficiency and a lot of improvements in the process. I want to go back to another uh, process that we, we developed, which is we're using biological systems to, to recycle material, and we're building the, the, the large tank for that uh, even as we speak right now. And this project came out of a food waste project that we did a couple of years ago with, uh, with uh, Cafe de Corral and, and Starbucks, in which we took their food waste and turned it into, and fermented the food waste and added enzymes to it and turned them back into fiber. So we were building uh, PLA and, 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 and other uh, polyesters, PET polyesters, with, uh, from, from food waste. So uh, the thought, so we are continuing, we're continuing with that uh, strain of research, but we're also saying since we have figured out a way to use enzymes and fermentation to, to, uh, to process material, can we do that with recycled uh, material as well? And so that's what we've, we're doing. We're, we're developing a large system to use um, uh, enzymes uh, and to ferment material so that we can make, uh, we, we can make new uh, fabrics out of them. Um, it's, it's enzymes and, and a fermentation process. So it's a little bit slow, but it is very energy efficient because it's enzymes doing all the work for us. So we're very excited about this. In 2019, uh, we want to work very hard to, to scale this up as well. Um, that tank, by the way, looks a lot better now in, in, in Taipo. We've cleaned up the, uh, the engineering a, a little bit. Some of the logistics challenge uh, is this, this problem that we have in the, in the world in which the things that we want to recycle are not in the places where we do manufacturing. Right? We manufacture in, in, in developing economies and we consume in developed economies. So, so processes like the ones that we are, we, we are now working on actually solves that logistics problem because we can now do the processing in Hong Kong. 
Um, the, the Taipo uh, fa mill that we've opened up uh, in September 3rd is now capable of doing, uh, of, of processing um, post-consumer material uh, at the rate of about a ton a day. Uh, and that uh, in, in about 30 days, that uh, rate of processing per day can go up to, will, will go up to three tons a day. Three tons a day sounds like a lot, but don't forget we have almost 100 plus tons of day of waste that we're generating. So in 2019, we are working out uh, a model to see if we can upgrade that to about 10 tons a day. Um, so, so there, th th there it is. Um, I, I guess let me, st let me stop here and, and talk about some of the things that we learned in the process. Um, and and, and the, the key learning as I was thinking about this is, is this, one is shipping beats everything, right? And, and scaling beats everything. Uh, if you, I can do PowerPoints for a year about what we're doing and I can tell you about what we're doing in the lab, but until I show you some machinery, I can show you a ton of recycled material, I'm just talking. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything. So that's why we are in such a hurry, right? Because we want people to be excited about what we're doing and we think that the problem isn't getting any better. And so it's our responsibility to come up with the solutions for these types of problems. And, and the second learning is that um, <laughs> closure is overrated, I guess would be one way to put it, or, or perfection is overrated. The systems that we have deployed, they are nowhere near uh, as efficient as they could be. They're not very pretty, uh, but they work. It's 1.0, you know? Microsoft ships us 1.0 all the time and sends us patches uh, for the things that they didn't do. Uh, so we're taking that approach. We're taking the technology approach and we're just going to ship as quickly as possible and then we'll get it better uh, as we learn how to use these things better. And then, and then finally, there's this sense of urgency and passion that, that we have. It isn't getting any better, and the sooner we, we are able to deploy these things, the sooner we are, uh, we are able to uh, make useful contributions to the problem. I'll stop right here. Thank you very much. So may I we invite everyone and also um, Annie to go on to stage again so we are going to into the panel discussion. So if you get any questions, yes, you can ask after a uh, very quick discussion amongst the panelists. Okay, thank you um, once again. Thank you, Annie, and thank you, Edwin. It's, it's really um, eyes opening, actually. So to begin with, um, I'll just um, ask a few questions and uh, I will open the floor for the audience. I think they have been waiting to ask you questions for a long time. So Annie, um, I just want to ask, because you are actually, um, um, you got a very innovative ideas on this kind of banking and also credit cards and this kind of finance system. How you can persuade your bank to make it happen? I guess you, it's difficult because when you're talking about index, you're you are talking about um, graphical illustration, talking to the general public, that's how much environmental the impact they've introduced. Actually, I think it kind of you're changing the consumer behavior. So maybe you're asking them not to purchase too many unnecessary stuff. So I guess it's, it's, it will be difficult how you can get over this. Um. Thank you, and, and this is the question I have been asked many, many times, and I, I think it's, uh, you, you have to be very passionate and believe, believe the issue which you are fighting for and, and choose these issues, and it's often the uh, most difficult part is to convince uh, to idea, convince your own organizations and get, get uh, uh, others on board. Uh, to get the focus to say the Baltic Sea, it was uh, really natural to our part. We, we are in the middle of the Baltic yeah. Sea and, and we have long history in nature conservation. But then change the cards and change the, all the credit cards. And we are private banking bank, wealth management. It's, it's uh, very traditional that these banks are having a lot of hierarchy 
uh, there are black cards, there are platinum cards, gold cards, and different kinds of cards, and we are promoted cause. But we, and, and I got a very small team who believed in this, and I could uh, convince our management team. I'm, I'm part of our uh, management team in, uh, in our bank, and, and, and uh, that there is the business connection also. So to drive the positive change, to be, uh, build our brand as a bank uh, who cares the environment, we are going to be winning also in business. And, and if I look our deposits in our environmental account now, so it has increased almost 40% last year. So we are getting a lot more customers. We are recruiting more, custom more customers. Uh, customers are, are promoting us. So it's, you have to believe and, and uh, do things, it. go for it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, thank you, Andy. Actually, Edwin, I got sort of very similar questions to you. Um, because um, actually, I guess everyone, if we are doing research and also development in Hong Kong, um, getting the seed money, getting the initial investment is really difficult. Um, personally, we have also engaging the ITF, which is a nightmare. So um, how do you convince the IDFDF to, to invest into the Tesla research? Because yeah, it's, it's not easy at all. It's not easy. It's talking about the proposal up to 150 pages. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> how do you yeah. convince them? With great difficulty. I, I, I think um, one of the, 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 the challenges is that, uh, is that uh, on, it's, it's the, the, I think we have a very responsible government. And, and, and they are very, uh, very uh, sensitive to make sure that uh, resources are deployed uh, um, in a way that is, uh, that is transparent and, and fair. And, but on the other hand, the downside of that is exactly what you're talking about, which is the bureaucracy, the delays, and the speed in, in, uh, in getting things through uh, the system. What, one of the things that, that I, I would encourage people who are trying to navigate the ITF uh, um, uh, uh, system is really to learn the system, figure out what the, what the, uh, uh, what the rules are, uh, and then the, the other one is to use language which they understand. Uh, I, I think oftentimes, and this was something we learned too, we speak from our own perspective, so we talk too much in uh, commercial terms, we talk too much in scientific terms, uh, whereas what they are looking for are, are more things about t talk to me about impact, talk to me about transparency, talk to me about the, the uh, financial accountability of it. And, and then sort of adopt those types of uh, uh, vocabulary so that we can, uh, th that it makes it easier for them to, to, to make the decisions. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So back into Annie, um, because like um, one of the things you mentioned is the environmental conservation fund. So you 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 invest into environmental conservation projects. So I just want to ask um, if the consumer or the, the your clients have a say in choosing which kind of project they invest in, or if it will be centralized and and coordinated by your bank. Mm -hmm. um, so we we have this public sheet project and the account is uh, open yearly uh, for individuals, companies and organizations uh, to search for funding and uh, for their good ideas and to save the Baltic Sea. And um, we have an official jury and, and there is uh, representatives from uh, universities, business and non-profit uh, organizations and, and I'm jury chairperson in, in the Baltic Sea project. So we choose, uh, we, we got uh, uh, 130 applications this year and, and uh, as a jury uh, we, we chose the 12 uh, projects to the public votes. So public and all our clients and, and public can vote this project in, in the internet and in the social media. And, and then the jury yeah. do the li li last decisions. So we are engaging yeah. all yeah. or to be part of this. It's a very good public engagement and also public education because yeah. they can choose, they're being informed of what kind yeah. of project they want to be involved in. Yeah, thank you, Guru Andy. And all the, all the projects, they are promoting a lot of in social media and engaging everyone to vote their project. Yeah, <laughs> so you also give the projects this kind of um, public uh, publicity yeah. so they can talk to you, they explain to the customer, explain to the clients. Yeah. 
Well, that's good, very good. So speaking of the um, H&M and also your great collaborations with the, um, the, the textile company, um, I guess um, because right now um, the fast fashion is, is contributing a lot of um, pollution, contamination to the world, especially in the developing countries. So um, do you have any schedules that how you can help the textile industry to get rid of this kind of um, damage to the, to the environment? Every well, but so, so first thing to be clear, we, we work with many brands uh, of which H&M, the H&M Foundation and H&M are, are, are part of the, the, the group that we're with. Um, uh, we also work with brands that are very uh, aware and very conscious of the environment. So Patagonia is one of our, our closest alliance uh, uh, research partner in, in, the, in the United States, uh, as well as other uh, manufacturers and suppliers, who are, which are Hong Kong companies. Uh, most of them, actually, most of the large uh, manufacturers work with us. This is a polluting industry. Some, would, uh, some have described this as uh, the textile and apparel industry is the second largest contributor to water pollution in the world, uh, right after uh, petroleum, right? And, and so we do, have, uh, we, we do have a responsibility to, to, to clean up our act. And, and so this is why we, we, we want to work on, we're very excited about working on the technologies and we are working on, on, on some of the science-based solutions uh, for, for the, for the uh, 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 environmental issues that, that, that we've caused. Uh, and, and this is how we look at, at, at Hong Kong in the future. Where do we create value? How do we create value? Uh, why should people work with, with us in Hong Kong? It's because uh, hopefully we are a good resource for sustainable uh, solutions for, for, the, for the fashion industry. So all the things that I've talked about, waterless technologies, uh, green materials, uh, energy efficiency in, in, in uh, manufacturing, uh, um, and, and uh, recycling technologies are all things that, that we, uh, we, we are working on and we're pushing out uh, 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 viable solutions and, and systems, uh, even as we speak. That's very good. So it will be my last question to both of you, and then we will open the floor to anyone who are interested in asking questions to you. So um, just what I mentioned in, in the pantry, so the ICC report saying that we just got 12 years to save the planet from climate change. With both of your innovative ideas, I just want to ask, um, are you confident in saving the planet? So this is the first question for your series. And the other one is, what are your next milestones? On, no matter on the credit card project or the textile industry, what are the next milestones? Uh, I'm optimistic, uh, so I, I want to believe that, that uh, we, 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 we can survive and fight uh, uh, against the climate change, and, and, but we need to act. So we don't have a lot of time, so that's why everybody uh, from his or her own way has to do changes. In, in the lifestyle. And, and um, what we really want to do is uh, about this index and, and uh, share with the other banks and, and get this as a, uh, we have a lot of regulation in banking, banking so I, I hope this uh, could should be a regulatory uh, so, so that the index should be implemented to the credit card so that we could raise the awareness to everyone. Uh, to make a Apart sustainable choices. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. Well, if, if you, you have to be optimistic, and so I am optimistic because if I'm not, I'm going to find a, a mountain somewhere and, and I'm going to get food and, and water and hide, <laughs> right? Um, there, there've always been, uh, uh, there've always been prophets of doom about, about, you know, we have reached the limits of our, of, of, of our planetary, um, Boundaries. We are. We have overconsumed. We are. We are too polluting. We are doing too much damage, and and this is not the first time that that mankind has pulled back from the brink, and and I think that with the right um, commitment, with the with the right engagement, with the right science, uh, we can we can make this work. Um, there is a sense of urgency, so certainly on my part about this, because I think the problem is not going to get better. Uh, and the sooner we deal with the problem, the easier it is to, to solve the problem. So, so there is a, a sense of urgency about getting to certain solutions uh, early on. But I think this is why, uh, Annie, w when, I, when I listen to, to you talk, I'm very excited because I think one of the keys is to have um, 
uh, have models of success and, op and possibilities, right? And th that, that others can emulate and that's how you scale these things up, right? By, by, so by creating what you've created, I think that, that helps all of us to think uh, innovatively and creatively about, ah, there's an idea there, right? So what will be your next milestone? Um, I, I, I think that, that we, we, we would like to roll out um, like half a dozen, a dozen viable um, models of new possible uh, innovative uh, solutions to, for the textile and apparel industry for sustainability. New ways of manufacturing, new ways of dealing with waste, new materials, uh, and we want to do that in 2019 and 2020 so that, so that we have a, uh, we create a center of gravity uh, of, of, of this is where these, uh, these ideas are coming from. And then we attract talented young people to come uh, work with us and support us and help us uh, really create critical mass. Um, most of the challenges that we deal with in sustainability are multidisciplined. Uh, and so it, it really does take a group of, of, of committed, dedicated, smart people working together to, to make this work. So we can create that space for people to do that, I think it's it's a wonderful opportunity for Hong Kong. Thank you. So, are there any question on the phone? Yeah. I'm easy or or do you speak Chinese? 我想問一問阿Edwin,你做了那個 innovation 之後,在一個 industrialization process,你們會怎樣去考慮這件事? 還有你覺得最好的 industrial partner會在什麼region裡做得到? 第二個問題,我想 Let me just, um, just do it in an English one so everyone get to know your question. So, um, my friend here is just asking, um, Edwin on the industrialization, you're asking how to define it, right? How to, how to, how to scale yeah. it up. How to scale it up and what kind of partners you're you are engaging in your industrialization. Yeah. Does, does the translation go both ways? So, I'll answer in Chinese and I'll explain to you. Uh, you you know, 就好像例如無水漂染那樣,我們這個跟Patagonia做 this is the, the advantage of working in Hong Kong, uh, uh, um, is we, we, we can partner with anybody, <laughs> right? We, we, have a, we, we don't have an army, we don't have a navy, we don't fight with anybody. So anybody can come and partner with us. We're an open port, we're an open economy. And we are situated in the middle of most textile, fashion, apparel uh, supply chains of the world. Some, if you are a multinational, you have something going on in Hong Kong. Most likely, you have something going on in Hong Kong, and that's why we touch everybody. So, so uh, uh, it's 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 really it's really useful to be to be where we are uh, right now, and and we are we are we are we are happy to to work with uh, with anybody. I tell you the the the, the disadvantage and the, on the mindset change that we have to engage in, uh, all of us in Hong Kong, uh, and, and the challenge is this: we are so used to being OEM and ODM manufacturers. 
So OEM, ODM manufacturers, by definition, are passive. We do whatever the customer tell me to do. We make whatever the, 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 they, the design tell us to, to make. And we have to stop thinking that way because we have to contribute to the, to the creation and innovation process. We have to be part of the solution, uh, not just part of the problem. And that involves us thinking much more broadly. And, and, and that's a Hong Kong problem. That's our problem, not, not our global partners' problems. So the second question is, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I see the merit of uh, the credit card uh, system for uh, sustainable consumption promotion uh, in regarding the uh, carbon footprint uh, campaign. But uh, how, t how to really uh, put the uh, carbon neut uh, uh, neutral uh, ideas into practice when it go to a dollar sign or a uh, product exchange uh, process? You ask uh, if about the donations and uh, an opposite uh, uh, carbon footprint. So we offered um, our customers in in they can very easily donate in the mobile app to the WWF's uh, uh, nature conservation, or, or they can open Baltic Sea account and and. Uh, by that way, be part of the uh, nature conservation. So it's easy to the customers uh, to donate uh, and compensate their carbon footprint. Uh, uh, how to count the the, the offset of uh, okay? I purchase uh, one dollar okay. product, and how I can really uh, how convert to count? into yeah convert uh, into carbon carbon. Okay. Yeah. How to count? So uh, we offer the uh, index. Uh, we have implemented the index uh, so that customers can see the impact of their purchases, uh, each purchase is uh, in euros or, or dollars and in crumbs. And they get the total amount in month. Uh, so I see I'm flying to Hong Kong, so my carbon footprint is very high now. So I can I can compensate. I see after one this November month, what's my carbon footprint in in November? So I can donate. Thank you. So um, are there any questions? Yeah. Hi, I would like to ask Anne-Marie. And some of us in Hong Kong have negative feeling towards the bank. I don't know is it true in Finland, but uh, the banks always call us and ask us to uh, for, for loans, to promote their loans and service. So the bank is profit making to us, what they focus. Um, so uh, I, don't, I don't know how to promote to the banks in Hong Kong. And I don't know if they will buy this idea. And also for us, uh, business is uh, focused on making profits. So how do you get their support on this? Thank you. Thank you. I, I think is is uh, um, consumers. We we all people. We have uh, great impact to drive the change. We we are those who buy the products for these companies, and we 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 make the choices. So uh, if you go to your bank and say you have heard a presentation of on a small Finnish bank, and they have this index in their credit card and they are offering it for free to any bank who wants to be part of the solution. So you can ask your bank at please uh, contact uh, this bank and, and get this index also to our bank. And I as a customer want to be part of this. And, and when we are voting all, <laughs> so it, we can make the change happen. So how about the profits? Because one of the uh, yeah the audience oh mentioned yeah businesses yes. for uh, profits. Yes, yes. But when we are, have these discussions uh, with the other banks, uh, so there is uh, um, always these discussions uh, about business connections, I, and I really see it's it's always with this at work for the environment that you Edwin also talked about the business opportunities and the business possibilities. So it's really important. So we. Every time when we discuss these other banks, so it's an important part how we have succeeded. 
how we have managed to raise aware, awareness of our brand, how we have got more customers uh, engaged with us, customers promoting with us. It's how we have increased the uh, accounts uh, in uh, deposits in our Baltic Sea account. So, so I think really uh, in the future, these companies who have great purpose, they are surviving better among the others. So that's really important part of the, the profits. The consumer's power. The consumer's power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was just going to add to that. I, 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 I share with you an, an experience with, with, with Patagonia because we work with them. Um, you know, in 2010, I think it's 2010 or 2011, they famously on Thanksgiving Day, which is today or tomorrow, uh, uh, yesterday in, in the U.S., they, they released a full-page ad in the New York Times that said, "Don't do not buy this jacket, right? Yeah. And, and so... Uh, I, I met the, one of their, their leadership uh, soon after the, the, the ad came out, and I said, congratulations, it's a very bold move. Um, so they, were, they said, yeah, you know, we do this, and there's all these reasons why we did this. So my second question to them was, how was sales? Yeah. <laughs> so they hemmed and hawed, and they wouldn't answer and change the subject. Yeah. So I kept asking, well, how was sales? You know, so, so finally they said, sales went up. Um, so, so the the so I did some research about it. So, so first of all, P Patagonia is a bunch of hippies, right? They they are in in Ventura County, California, and they are surfing and they are making money for them. Is just you know because we work with them, they they are it's just not something they think about. And so, so if it wasn't a clever marketing idea, what happened, right? Because in the outdoor uh, segment of the of the fashion industry. Um, the, the, there hasn't been growth. There hasn't been a lot of growth. But they, they grew uh, significantly, double digits. They've been growing significantly, double digits, ever since that ad came out, every year. And, and the, the conclusion after the research we did was that they were actually taking market share away from the other brands. So, so you as a consumer has a choice when you buy a jacket to buy Columbia, North Face, or, or, or some other brand. And so more consumers, because of this, this idea that they expressed, decided to buy their brand, right? And, and so, so there is a, a, a side effect uh, 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 with doing well and doing good. And, and that is that if you, if you express a, a value and a sentiment uh, it, with your brand, um, you will get uh, other, uh, you will get new customers and customers who actually uh, align with you. Um, and, and, and I think that's very important, especially for those of you young in the room who are millennials. You know, the, the, the challenge for, for young people, for all of us today, is that um, we don't need more clothes, right? If we stop buying clothes today, we will not freeze this winter. We'll be fine. And when we buy clothes, we buy it not for only for functional reasons, not only for aesthetic reasons, but also to, to express what we stand for. So, so, and what we believe in. So if you buy something like, like from a brand like Patagonia, which is very environmentally friendly, so all, all you're saying is that I, I support this, I, that is an expression of who I am. So I, I think more and more uh, uh, th that type of, of, uh, of expression, value expression, drives consumption. And so it, 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 you can do well and do good um, at the same time. Okay, thank you. So uh, do you have any more questions? Thank you, Edwin and Emery. Uh, Emery, for your lovely sharing this morning. And I'm Serena from Al Hong Kong Foundation. And actually, I want to know a little more about you know, impact assessment from both of your projects. Because obviously, you know, when we're talking about innovation and projects nowadays, we want to know really the impact. You know, how do you quantify it? And like, are there any difficulties that maybe, uh, if you're doing it already, maybe are there, maybe you can share a little more about, you know, are there any difficulties when you're doing it and how do you mitigate, you know, those difficulties? I think maybe for the all -in bank, like maybe, well, like, do you really see a change in like your consumers, you know, lifestyle, you know, are you like, are you gonna have any like uh, plans for quantifying some, you know, and coming up with metrics and KPI for measuring, you know, changes and all that? Or do you see like people's participating, you know, in offsetting their carbon footprint or like, yeah. Uh, we launched the card 2016 and, and we, are, we are gathering the data uh, from our customers. And, and it's also important part when we discuss uh, about the implementing the index with the other banks that we want to share the data and, and see the impact. Our customers can now compare 
compare their behavior to the average. But I don't have any data, I, I can't say now. I, I have some statistics that increasing uh, from WWF, we have um, great collaboration with them. Our Baltic Sea account, as I said, they has deposits have raised 40% uh, uh, last year and then still increasing. But we have, it's very important to gather the data. So we really want to change the consumer behavior. And we do a lot of communications together with WWF. Uh, what you can do with your daily choices, what do you eat, what do you consume, what do you buy, and, and uh, don't waste food and, and the kind of things. So we help uh, our customers to do the sustainable choices. So it's communication and catering to data. It's important to measure <laughs> and to show. Right, if, if, if you rem I think that, 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 that's very good. But if you remember what I, what I started out is, we're not very good at talking about what we do. I mean, that's just an admission of, 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 of something that, that we, we need to improve on. Um, fortunately, in, in these sustainability projects, the gap is so big that we, we're working on the, the, the metrics, but we're not very precise right now. So, so for us, 100 plus tons uh, of, of, of materials get thrown into land, uh, landfills and incinerated today, uh, every day in Hong Kong. So if we can get three tons, five tons, 10 tons a day, we are 3%, 5%, 10% of the solution, right, one. And then two, um, just about all of our recycling technologies are, are, are dry. So we are not creating any new wastewater. So, so that carbon footprint immediately uh, gets dropped significantly. And then the energy consumption, if you can go directly fiber to fiber, is, is, a, is a double digit, if not you know, 75%, 80%, 90% drop in energy consumption. So the good news for us is that at least we have a lot of low hanging fruit uh, today in, in the projects that we work on. So we're working out the metrics as we are going along, because we do have to develop the metrics. We haven't worked out what those metrics are right now. We are very confident they are outrageously significant. Uh, but there will come a day in the next uh, two, three years in which we have to be a lot more rigorous, and, and that's probably in itself uh, also a research project. Thank you. So thank you very much. So are there any further questions? If no, then I'll ask the final one. Yeah, the, the moderator got the final one. <laughs> <laughs> so because I guess um, both of you have mentioned about the talents. Like Edwin mentioned, we need to have people that are um, willing to join with very devoted, um, dedicated mind um, for any. Actually, we are also talking about consumer behavior. We are talking about how we can curate or cultivate the customer that with an uh, ethical choice or a conscious living. So feel in, this, um, in this room, there are lots of young social innovators. Like, do you have any advice worth for them in their social entrepreneurship journey? I think it's it's um, all about collaboration, and and it's it's uh, that everyone everyone can be the change maker. Um, I think we we are a bank, and we are working a lot of with environment environment issues. And and uh, um, when I got this idea of of this credit card and and uh, uh, about measuring the carbon footprint of the transactions, so. It, I contacted this uh, uh, company, Sustainalytics, uh, Thomson Reuters, and KPMG, who are mega big companies compared to the Aalandsbanken. I just presented the idea, got the engaged, and said, I said, we should do this, but you don't get to pay anything. We do this together for the environment. And that's why I had had really <laughs> much easier to convince my, my own executive team. <laughs> uh, this is a project. We do this, it doesn't cost anything. Everybody comes on broad. They want to uh, save the environment. So it's all about collaboration. So believe, do, have courage, drive the change. Yeah, I think that that's a, that's a great example of, of uh, you know, I, 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 would, I would echo that. Uh, I, uh, um, Right away. So first of all, it, it is about teamwork. The problems that we, we are trying to deal with are, the, are, are complicated and they are huge. And so it, it, is, it, it needs a multi, multi-discipline uh, approach. 
and it is, uh, it is, it, it has to be a group effort because we really probably can't do it together unless you're really, really talented. Um, uh, the, and, 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 and so I have three sons, so I tell my sons these things. It turns out, um, uh, intelligence, uh, and, and, and ideals and aspirations are contagious diseases, right? So if you want to, if you want to learn to smoke, hang out with people who smoke. If you want to learn to drink, hang out with people who drink. If you want to have great ideals and aspirations, if you want to be smart, hang out with people who, who have, who have those things as well. You will find that you will, you will, it, it will contaminate you and, and you will, you will, uh, um, be smarter and, and better at, at, at working on those things. Um, but, but then the other thing I would say too, just, just, uh, just thinking about the project you, that, that you've thrown out and, and how you are thinking of it in terms of scaling it, is that we have to be outrageously aspirational. We have to be outrageously ambitious uh, and that we, you know, the world does not need another app. Uh, the world does not need uh, small solutions to small problems anymore. And we have huge, uh, you know, civilization threatening challenges in front of us. And, and when we become aspirational and we, when we think of these audacious, outrageous things that we want to do, that's when we get people excited. You don't get really excited to do small things, but you do get excited to be part of the team that saves civilization, right? So, so, so let's do that. And, and if we only get 50% success, it's great, we saved half of civilization, right? And so, so I, I think it's okay. In Hong Kong, we have this great sense of a fear of failure. You know, we will lose face, mo means you, whatever. You know, yeah, if I'm gonna lose face, I'm gonna lose face because I tried something really, really outrageous, right? And, and, and what better way to lose face because of that? So, so, so I, yeah, I, I guess those, those were the things I would encourage young people to, to, to do. At the end of the day, it's your problem. I'm old, I'll be dead before this is a, <laughs> right? So, you know, have fun with it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Andy. Thank you so much. <laughs>